Hey everybody, I'm Argyle Funf. This is a review for The Mystery of Marie Roget by Edgar Allan Poe. This would have been the second detective story ever written because Poe invented the idea of detective stories. So this is not a very good one. I I I'm sorry to say that because it it's sort of on the border between fascinating and super boring at the same time. But of the three uh, stories that Edgar Allan Poe wrote with Detective Dupont, this is clearly the worst. Murders at the Rue Morgue and The Purloined Better, the, the Purloined Letter, those were better stories. Those were great stories, like 10 out of 10 stories. This one's more like a 3 out of 10. It's, it's not good. It's a true crime story. And that's kind of interesting. It's a true crime. So the premise is that... Um, oh gosh, I'm not even sure how to explain it. Well, okay, well, let me, let me talk about the story in general. So, um, th there, there was this woman who was murdered in New York City, and the, the, she, she was sort of a celebrity, so she knew some famous people, and she went missing for a week, and that sort of caused a big hullabaloo, and, uh, she said, oh, I was just visiting my aunt. And then, uh, a few years later, she went missing again, and her body was found at the end of the week. And that's the true crime that Edgar Allan Poe was setting out to solve through his detective, uh, Detective Auguste Dupont. So it, it is French. The story is French. He, he moved the scene of the crime to, to Paris, changed all the names of the characters and some of their jobs. But it, it's definitely the true crime story. It's definitely a story of the murder in New York. So the way the story is set up is that Dupont reads like five or six uh, newspaper accounts of the murder mystery, and that's the entire story. He reads the newspaper accounts, he gives his commentary on the newspaper accounts, and that's it. That's the entire story. Nothing happens at the end, and that's sort of the reason why the story is such a bummer is because there's no real conclusion. Because guess what? The crime went unsolved. We, we never figured out who actually killed the woman. And so it's, it's a true crime story. Yeah, that, that's a good idea, but it, it's also an unsolved crime. So there's no resolution at the end. The ending is just um, Dupont saying, okay, well, I think we need to look into these angles. Like here are three things we need to do. We need to look into these angles and we need to ask these questions of uh, these various witnesses. That, that's that's where the story ends. We, we don't get any resolution. We just get told, here are things we should do in order to solve the murder mystery. Yeah, so it's kind of a bummer. The other thing that makes the story not so interesting is it is super long. Super duper long. So, gosh, I, I, oh man. It's like, you know, we'll get like two sentences of uh, the newspaper article and then we'll get one to two pages of commentary on those sentences. It's extreme. There is so much detail, a very minute detail uh, analysis of these various newspaper articles. And, you know, it, it probably was fascinating to everybody, you know, back in the 1800s who had actually seen these newspaper articles and read them in the newspaper and were very excited. It, it was probably super interesting to see the great detective analyze them bit by bit by bit but it's just so long and so boring so i i remember i was about 25 percent of the way through the story and that's when he's finished with newspaper article number one i'm like oh finally because i was getting bored i'm like okay can we move on with the story let's stop analyzing this one newspaper and and then he just moves on to the next newspaper <laughs> like i said there's like five or six i'm like Oh my gosh, this is the story. It's all just newspaper analysis. And, you know, I'd say like two-thirds of the analysis was the detective disagreeing with the newspaper uh, articles. Because, you know, the newspaper authors sort of disagreed with each other about what happened. And, and that makes sense because it's this is big unsolved murder. People are proposing different theories. So one person thought that uh, the corpse was not the victim. They thought it was a different corpse. They thought there were actually like two victims. So he's saying, okay, well, Marie's still alive somewhere. That dead body belonged to another woman, a different woman. And they tried to back this up by changing the time frame of the murder. 
And Dupont totally took issue with that. He's like, no, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So the murder could have happened anytime. It didn't necessarily have to take place after midnight on Sunday. That's what the newspaper said. He's like, no, she could have been killed five minutes after she left her mother's house. She could have been killed five minutes before the dead body was found. We, we can't jump to conclusions. Uh, the dead body was found in the river, and so he kind of goes into detail about how bodies float. So like if you hold your arm above your head, that changes your center of gravity and causes you to sink. If you put your arms down, that changes your center of gravity that causes you to float. And there are various things which change uh, how, how you float. Like if you're wearing heavy boots, you're probably going to sink faster. Um, depending on your body structure or your clothing, that's going to affect uh, whether you, you sink or not. Yeah, and let's see. That was one of the articles basically uh, positing. I think there was another article trying to frame the, the victim's boyfriend, boyfriend slash fiance. So in real life, he killed himself with poison afterwards. It, it, that's true. That happened in real life. But that really wasn't focused on too much on the story because the newspaper article kind of breezed through it. I feel like if it was a satisfactory, fancy detective story, we would have looked more into the boyfriend's suicide. That seems like a big thing to kind of ignore. And I feel like, uh, oh, one of the newspapers was talking about, you know, her disappearance three years earlier and trying to tie that into the current disappearance. And, and Dupont definitely goes off on that. And I feel like, well, that's another possibility, which is really interesting. But because the newspaper doesn't talk about it too much, like he basically will only talk about it once he's at that part of the newspaper. And then for the rest of the story, it gets forgotten. Does, does that make sense? So he's like, okay, when, 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 the, when this really interesting possibility comes up, like the possibility that the, the uh, boyfriend did it and then committed suicide, it's like, okay, we'll talk about it. But then for the second half of the entire story, it's just completely ignored. And, and yeah. Same thing with her uh, kidnapping three years ago. So that's that's kind of a bummer. I, I feel like those things should have been brought up again. Uh, Dupont concludes that the woman was killed by one person, and uh, he thinks the crime scene was sort of faked. Sort of faked, because the crime scene makes it look like there's a giant struggle. And the one, one witness said that there was a gang of ruffians there. And he was like, okay, well, hold on. If there were six people all attacking this poor young woman at once, it would not have been such a huge struggle. They would have subdued her easily. And also, they wouldn't have dragged her along the ground. You've got six people. They would have been able to pick up the body and carry it to the river. And they wouldn't have left behind so much evidence. Because even if person number one, two, and three all managed to fail to notice the evidence... Person number four would have been there to notice it. So, I mean, those are um, DuPont. That's basically his conclusion as to why it wasn't a gang that uh, killed her. Why he thinks it was just one person that killed her. And yeah, so that's the, uh, that's basically the story. It's just, he, he analyzes newspaper accounts of a real-life crime and comes to his own conclusions about how the crime probably happened but there's no resolution because we don't know how the crime did actually happen. Dupont just comes up with these various possibilities. He's got these avenues that should be explored. He says they should be explored. And then that's it. That's where the story ends. So it's kind of unsatisfying. I feel like it would have been satisfying if, A, the story had been cut in half. Because I don't, I don't really want to read this in-depth analysis of newspapers I'm sorry, it's just so long. It's huge. I think it's over 40,000 words. I don't know. No, it's not 40,000. It's more like 20 to 30,000. It's it's definitely the longest of the trilogy. It's just a huge, huge analysis. Yeah, so I feel like if we had cut the newspaper analysis in half, instead of trying to examine every newspaper story, I would have focused on just like the relevant ones, I, I would I would have picked ones which were relevant and which fit a particular narrative, which fit the story, the narrative of the story, and then I would have had a conclusion, sort of like at um, uh, Murders on the Rue Morgue. So that story had like, okay, Dupont does a lot of analysis, 
examining the crime scene and thinking things over, then he goes out and finds the culprit. He actually goes and does this investigation to try to confirm his theories and figure out how it happened. And I feel like that would have been great for this Marie Roger mystery because, you know, if, if he had actually gone out and found the culprit and, you know, confirmed his theories, said, okay, well, this one wasn't good, this one wasn't good, but aha, I figured it out, it was the sailor. The sailor was the culprit. And if that had been an ending, that would have been good. That would have made it much more satisfactory. So, yeah. But, you know, I really can't blame Edgar Allan Poe. It, it makes sense that, you know, you know, he's just doing this story as a thought experiment. It's, it's an exercise in thought. He's just thinking his way to the solution of a murder mystery based on these six newspaper accounts. And that's kind of a good idea. It just didn't work. I think it would have been better as a detective story. You know, one where we have an actual resolution. Even if it's just a fake one made up for the story, that's fine. That would have been good. And if the newspaper stuff had been severely cut back, like halved, that's how I, that's how I would improve the story. I also would have more dialogue between Dupont and the narrator because Dupont talks the entire time. Most, like 90% of the story is just a huge lecture by Dupont. And that's also kind of a, a, a problem. Would have been better if there's more back and forth between the two characters. Okay, so, so that's my analysis of mystery of uh, Marie Roger. Definitely the, the worst of the Dupont trilogy. Yeah, like I said, I, I, I give it about a three out of 10. And the other two were both 10 out of 10. So, you know, this was a good idea, but it, it just did not play out well in reality. I think a big part of the problem was it, it, it's a true crime story and the crime was never solved in real life. So it's impossible for there to be any resolution. If Poe had done a true crime story about a real crime, which was solved, it probably would have been better. 